breakfast, as small gift as it may seem, it's not one that I take for granted. Many of the youth that I serve do not always enjoy the luxury of breakfast, much less a warm one. Now, while preparing for this speech, I asked Colleen what she wanted me to talk about, and she said, talk about your work. Right, my work. The most important thing I can say about my work is that it isn't mine. It's part of something uh, a little bit bigger than me. My tapestry, or my part in the tapestry at least, started when I was young. My father served the city of Long Beach for 40 years as a firefighter, and my mother is a labor lawyer for the wrongfully fired. So I acquired, early on, a sense of justice and courage. Through my education, I've been taught by sages and scientists, philosophers and priests, each teaching in their own way the pursuit of truth and I stand on their shoulders today. Now, my work with Stand Up For Kids, that's even more obvious a co-labor. Our two main tasks, as Colleen said, include outreach, where we go to the streets and shelters with food, water, clothing, hygiene, and the second, maintaining a youth house where they can drop in throughout the week to take care of their needs and also relax in a safe environment. But any of the success of these programs is the shared product of John's planning, Jackie's love, Megan's efficiency, Yvonne's energy, Sam's calm, Andrew's dedication, Kristen's networking, Tian's approachability, Casey's football, and a lot, lot more. And then there's my wife. Nothing I do, from school to service, can be understood apart from her constant support and unconditional love. She's my keen editor, my faithful partner, and my best friend. Now, I recount this list to pay honor where honor is due. But let it also be a reminder that our lives are forged in the fire of each other's hearts. Or, as Dr. King once wrote, we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of reality. But mutuality is more than just the mechanism of our making. It is the midwife of all social trends. When we live our lives for each other, when we live our lives with each other, when we live through each other, we begin to see that we already have been given everything that we need. Now there are days that the world and its problems seem intractable, impossible. One part of the globe suffers from drought, and somewhere else it floods. And some ask, what cruel irony that these people die of too little water, while these die too much dive too much. But the real question, I think, with droughts here and floods there, is how can we build better pipes? <laughs> because every crisis of scarcity has a corresponding crisis of bounty. It's true, there are poor and hungry here in the valley. But there are a lot of us who overeat. You want to lose five pounds? Here's how. Tim's Save the World Diet Plan. <laughs> Two easy steps. One, refrain from eating one meal a week, and instead feed it to someone who needs it. So do the math. On any given night, there are 2,700 homeless people in America with county, which is a lot. But if the four million in our county fasted 5% of their weekly food, we could feed 200,000 which is more than what we need, it's more than five times what we need, that's literally 75 times what we need. And this isn't just hypothetical. Time and time again, we at Stand Up For Kids see a problem arise, only to discover a resource is right around the corner. At first I believed it was luck that our little organization was held in the hands of serendipity. For instance, my wife Kristen, she sits on the Coalition of Release Services, a collaboration of many different outreach organizations. And in one meeting, she mentions that Stand for Kids is running low on bottled water, only to find that St. Vincent de Paul has more water than they can store. Drought, <laughs> flood. Luck? No, because it continues to happen over and over again. And it is for this reason that I firmly believe that all of the problems of creation cannot somehow be larger than creation. Said another way, everything that is, is everything that everything needs. And this is a truth I've come to rely on. All projects in which I'm involved are ultimately about 
apparent richness and need. ASQs rich in innovation, homeless organizations need well developed design systems. Nonprofits are rich in community experience, scholars need that experience to better understand organizing. Standard for Kids needs a better sense of homeless issues, and the youth that we serve are willing to teach. And of course, the core of our project, homeless youth need immediate and long-term support, and we find the spaces and the places that have enough to give. Now, while actual droughts and floods are best solved by engineers, humanity is not transported through pipes. Human goods travel through the geography of hearts and minds, relational pathways made straight by generosity, creativity, and love. And as what we have and who we are moves freely between us, we begin to see that every one of us is tiny, unique, fragile, and necessary, a part of a flawless and beautiful whole. We're irreplaceably significant. The only possible and wholly needed answer to the problems that we solve, and the only one who can fill the roles that we take on. We are special, the novel manifestation of a divine.